What's up everybody, Brett here, and I'm bringing you back into another 3v3 low funds multiplayer battle taking place on Blackfire Pass. Pretty fun and unique map here in Total War Warhammer 2. I'm going to be playing as Norska. See there, good tall gaming, that's me. My allies are going to be the Empire and the Wood Elves, and we're going to be up against... Let's go ahead and slow-mo this as we get started, because this gets started very quickly. Let's actually pause it real quick so we can get into it. But we're going to be up against the Tomb Kings, as well as two of the new Vampire Coast factions. And let's start over here, because this is where stuff gets kicked off right away. The player playing as Silastra Dyerfin, and I think he kept her high and tight with the main army. Yeah, here she is. So she's got her Lore of the Depth spells, which we'll get into as the battle progresses. But her army is completely made up of Morngul's. And they are chevroned. Three chevrons apiece, in addition to the Regiment of Renown, the Night Terrors. So let's actually get these guys into slow-mo as they crawl forward. Luckily for us... They attempted to vanguard deploy in this forest region, but our Wood Elf player, who has a build that's very capable of dealing with this, happened to be the person deployed next to them. So three units of Eternal Guards with shields, good anti-large armor piercing, going to be able to deal easily with Morgul units, uh, despite their ability to regen in combat. Also have three of the Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts, so fire damage, excellent against the Tomb Kings and Undead units in general. And good armor piercing. Orion here in the middle getting ready to throw his spear. Taking aim. Let's see if he gets one. That'd be pretty sweet. And you'll see here we have some deep wood scouts as well. Does he get one? Oh, he swung a little wide, but it probably still did some damage. Just the way the hitboxes are. But two units of Deepwood Scouts with some Chevrons as well. Vanguard deployed. And they're going to do excellent against these lightly armored Morgul's. For Morgul's to be effective, they need to be in melee. And when they're not in melee, they have a very difficult time uh, sustaining themselves. And the Wild Hunters of Kuranos. So these guys are the Regiment of Renown Wild Riders with Shields. They have Guardian as well as Frenzy. Guardian giving uh, physical resistance to Orion as long as they're in proximity. But they also have 20% physical resistance of their own, in addition to being pretty much like the coolest looking cavalry in the game, in my opinion. And they are going to do a number on the Morngul army headed their way. Our Empire player here had a Hellblaster volley gun group situated on top of this nice hill. And he's been taking pot shots at Queen Bess, who is without a doubt their most powerful artillery piece. Uh, out of all the artillery pieces that they did bring. And there's a lot of kind of counter skirmishing going on with these deck gunners. And the Empire player just has a very wide front line of swordsmen. And I like that a lot. Going wide in a low cost 3v3 is definitely the way to go. As long as your leadership core is solid. And it definitely is in his case because he brought Boris Toddbringer. And he took two of his items. Let's see if we can click on him. He has the White Cloak of Ulrich, which is debuff in an AoE, as well as Crush the Weak, another debuff in an AoE. So lowering melee attack, melee defense, leadership, and also providing uh, melee defense and leadership to his allies with Hold the Line in a nice AoE. So my army here, I took a nice cheap front line of Marauders, so four in total. And we're rushing these guys because we felt like we had no choice. They just had superior range, and we need to get in there and see what we can shut down. I have some spearmen in the back, marauder spears, just in case they had some large threats that we needed to deal with, and that is certainly the case this game. They also have the Norskin, well, they, I should say, I have the Norskin ice trolls. I brought these guys uh, hoping to get my value from them. They're a bit expensive, and they're a unit with their low leadership. They're very difficult to make work, but if you can get them to fight and sustain combat for a long time, you'll get a lot of value from them. They do have the frostbite. Uh, on hit effect which slows enemies that they are fighting they also have regeneration so even if they route they'll regen they'll come back and i took the Vermeer warriors with great weapons for those of you've never seen those guys before they're giant cyclopean lizards uh, wielding these huge clubs and they're going to be great against the ushapti that our tomb king's opponent here is mixing in with their tomb guard i also have two units of the marauder hunters with javelins excellent 
unit for taking down large targets. They are anti-large. As their tooltip says, they're also decent melee combatants. And that's going to come in handy in the late game when they run out of ammunition. If they're still around, they'll be able to act as kind of, you know, budget marauders in effect. And this unit, perhaps the MVP of the entire battle, my Famir Balefiend with the Lore of Fire. I have Burning Head as well as Fireball here. Very cheap spell. Going to do, going to allow me to spam this at certain points in this battle, which you'll see I get tons of value from that, as well as Scroll of Shielding. So at some point, I'm going to be able to give something on the battlefield, 22% ward save for several seconds, hoping to save it from a lot of damage. And I've got my Marauder Chieftain here on a War Mammoth. So the only ability that I took was Fight or Die. And that's going to provide leadership and melee attack and an AoE, mostly to prevent my front line from breaking. But I saw an opportunity here to get into the back line, to get into these deck gunners, uh, to make it around these spears. The Count Noctilus player is sitting back here. Queen Bess has been destroyed by the Hellblaster Volley Guns Focus Fire, which is quite good. But between Grand Hierophant Kotep with no spells, just acting as an artillery piece, this Bone Giant here, essentially an artillery piece, a Necrofex Colossus out here on the wings, and Count Noctilus on his Necrofex Colossus. They are going to be quite scary at range, so we needed to get in there and see what we can do. You see here I've launched a fireball at Noctilus that ended up missing, which is quite disappointing. So let me go ahead and bring us to speed. You'll see the Damn Knight Errants have been summoned, and they're going to rush right into the front line and do a serious number against these swordsmen here. I charge my Marauder Chieftain on the new and improved Mammoth, and I charge them into the Spearmen knowing that they weren't braced, they were charging me. So they weren't able to actually stop me. And I'm going to get my guy into the deck gunners and look to do a lot of damage. You'll see there I take him down to half HP in one swipe. Meanwhile, I'm taking a lot of damage. The Empire player also had Zentler's Reichsguard held in reserve behind this hill. Very smart. With two Outriders with grenade launchers. So they're going to find a home here on this ledge and be able to shoot down into the melee below. These Morghuls are getting in and amongst these spears with Orion. And all of these ranged units and the Wild Hunters of Kuranos are holding them back. Really just the perfect counter to the Morghuls. Had I been positioned here, or our Empire player, the Morghuls would have been feasting on swordsmen and there wouldn't have been anything we could do about it. My Javelins have taken up position here, raining fire down. I'm targeting you with Shopti specifically. It's a big hit from Kotep here. He's going to get quite a few kills this game. The Rotting Promethean summons have broken through our front line thanks to Solastra Direfin. Bone Giant here taking shots into my Marauders. I get a Burning Skull down the front line and that's gonna seriously damage some of these Tomb Guard. These unfortunately moved at the last second. And Bangeist Revenge there going off from Silastra is gonna be decimating our front line. Maybe a bit of friendly fire there. But a lot of our Norskin units are routing. I had to pop Scroll of Shielding to get my Mammoth out of there. At a certain point, the Count Noctilus player took all of their focus fire and used it on my Mammoth to get me out of the back line. So I'm going to respect that damage. I don't want him to die too soon. And I'm going to pull him back behind this ridge. Lots of good fire coming in from the Outriders with grenade launchers. The Wood Elf player is just finishing his cleaning up of the Morghuls. And he's going to be looking to join this fight from this flank and aid us. And the Empire player and I really got bruised in that initial engagement. So we're going to be looking to retreat over this hill. Some of my Marauders have been thrown in to kind of delay the advance of these Tomb Guard. Allowing us to, to make our way over this ridge. A lot of the artillery pieces here are very linear in their fire arc. They're not, let's say, like Queen Bess or Mortars. So they're going to have a hard time shooting at units standing right behind the lip of this very steep ridge. So that's what we're doing. We're going to be pulling back. You see it's a fierce battle. I've been using fireballs for most of this game on different units trying to find them a home. But you see there I get a fireball that clips Silastra Direfin. And at that moment I knew what I had to do. So every time fireball was off cooldown. I'm going to be shooting Salastra Direfin. I was trying to get some damage on Count Noctilus, you know, trying to find find a home for all of that uh, Winds of Magic and Fire damage 
But once that that fireball clipped her, I knew that I needed to be using that to try and take her out. Because she is ethereal, she is very weak against any kind of magic damage. So we'll see if I manage to uh, to make use of that knowledge to help win us this game. The damn night errants here died at this point. No doubt they had quite a few kills before they passed. Just positioning ourselves nice and easy up on this hill. Our Wood Elf ally is using his ranged units to help pick off these rotting Prometheans as they degenerate. He's also focusing down the Tomb Guard, taking them out. You see here Realm of Souls has procced for the Tomb Kings, meaning that they're going to get a map-wide heal on their units. And we're just doing a lot of regrouping, but that also was the third tier of the Realm of Souls, which meant that he does get an Ushapi summon here right into the back line of all of these ranged units. You'll see I have another fireball coming here for Silastra. Let's see if it lands. Oh, that's perfect. And it took three. It took three fireballs to take her down. That's a total investment of about 15 wins of magic, which is not much when you consider the value of taking her out of the battlefield. She did get two of her Promethean summons off, as well as her Damn Knight Errants, a Van Geist Revenge. So she, she did manage to to get most of the value that you would expect to get from them. Marauder Chieftain, I sent him over to come and try and help clean up these Ushapti because these Ushapti were causing a lot of problems. 28, 29, 30 kills right now. All of them are Deep Wood Scouts and we need these range units to help us skirmish. Every model that dies is ammunition wasted. I used my Vermeer Balefiend, getting another nice fireball here on this bone giant. Did, a, did about 500 damage, not bad, uh, but also sending him closer and closer to crumbling. Kotep here. Some pretty juicy targets. The majority of his missiles did miss, but all he needs is one. Check out his kills. 63 kills, not bad, considering he is completely stripped down. He's essentially just an artillery piece at this point. So we've regrouped our army. We have absolutely no ammunition left. Our Norskin Ice Trolls are regenerating and our Marauders are so low that they'll probably break on impact here. Another fireball going off, tagging the Bone Giant. We really want to send him off the field. He still has about 40% of his ammunition and we don't need him firing. So between me and the Wood Elf player we're going to be able to to take him out. Unfortunately Count Noctilus Still has one shot left, he's already up to 133 kills, near perfect health. The Necrofex Colossus here still has three shots left and is at near perfect health as well. These deck droppers are shooting, Orion is still shooting, he still has a good bit of his ammunition as well. Six shots, you see here his spear after he just skewered some of these deck gunners. And the Empire player and I are kind of going off the same queue and we are going to move our chaff units, our marauders and our swordsmen and we're going to look to engage these tomb guard once again from a position of strength. The entire Silastra Dyerfin Morgul army has been crushed. The front line of Ushapti that was there before have all crumbled. The bone giant is nearly gone with seven ammunition left. Big shot there on my uh, hunters with javelins but they're essentially just melee combatants at this point. I'm going to use my Marauder Chieftain to get into these Tomb Guard and help break them up, push through the front line. Orion comes and starts to just absolutely spank Grand Hierophant Kotep, who is in no way, shape, or form a melee duelist. Orion, however, is unbreakable, has enormous weapon strength at 512, a lot of armor piercing, anti-large, and Kotep on this mount is considered a large target, so he's going to have a hard time. My Norskin Ice Trolls and my Premier Warriors of Great Weapons destroy the last remaining center pocket of, of Tomb Guard there and they're gonna rush forward to help my Marauder Chieftain take out Noctilus. Now you'll see here my own fireball clipped my Marauder Chieftain and took him down, made him rout, minus 21 leadership and he's gonna run away. I'm try I was trying to pin them down but they managed to consolidate both of their Necrofex Colossi and our troops are just so tattered. 
The deck gunners are retreating, but the Zittler's Reichsguard here coming into the fourth quarter. Get a nice charge. Man, I love these units. They raise their shields. Someone might be attempting to fire on them. Speed it up. Oh, well, no. Let's speed it up. Slow it down right as we get in there. They throw their lances out and they're just going to run down these deck gunners. We have a couple eternal guards left here. And we need their anti-large armor piercing on these Necrofex Colossi. We need them quite bad. The Outriders with grenade launchers are going to be crushing the last of the Tomb Guard. I like that. That was a good use of them. Boris Toddbringer here does not have his regeneration. So, got to be careful with him. But we do need his debuffs in melee. It would be nice if he was standing close to this fight. Uh, providing negative leadership here. Maybe, perhaps, forcing these units to crumble. The Femir Balefiend, and the reason why I like to bring them instead of the standard uh, Marauder caster, is that these guys are also quite good in melee. With 400 weapon strength, armor piercing, as well as armor sundering and magical attacks, they're not pushovers. They have decent HP pools, 65 armor, and they're fast. 54 speed on these guys. Orion here. One spear left. Gonna be throwing it into Count Noculus. The thing that's keeping them into this battle, despite the balance bar being in our favor, and there goes the last spear, is that their Count Noculus has the ability to summon just so many gunnery mobs. And you'll see here all three of these units are summoned. And at this point, we've isolated one of the Necrofex Colossi, but they're not even below their 50% threshold yet and HP and once they hit that point they are going to summon additional deckhand mobs to protect themselves. So we have so much chaff that we need to get through. Meanwhile our low tier very damaged infantry, uh, swordsmen, marauder hunters, eternal guard, they would have a hard time fighting these forces regardless and cutting their way through it but doing it under the terror causing gaze of Count Noculus and this Necrofex Colossus is going to be very difficult. Orion's popping Foe Seeker. He's going to be very good against these Chaff units. He is unbreakable, but he does not have his regeneration. He has an item, uh, the Cloak of Isha, that when he drops below, I think it's 20% HP threshold, he begins to regen and he gets a 40% uh, physical resistance. The Hounds of Orion going off there, damaging some of those summon units, but Count Noctilus is headed this way to try and take out Orion, and Orion should honestly just run. I have my Balefiend here attacking the Necrofex Colossus, and I'm doing this because I want to apply that Armor Sundering debuff. You see that I got another Fireball on Tenoctilus. I want to apply that uh, negative Armor debuff, the Armor Sundering, so that Boris Toddbringer, my Marauder Hunters, can attempt to do some damage to this guy. So much HP on them. Still at 3k. Noculus as well. We're nearly breaking their leadership. The Zentler's Rice Guard, we really needed their large stats here to attempt to wear down all the chaff units being summoned by Noculus. You'll see here even more. These are two more units that have been summoned. Mucking up the Eternal Guard, allowing Noculus to escape and rejoin his buddy. At this point, I think I was motioning for our Empire player to bring in his Swordsman to try and block up Count Noctilus, prevent him from getting close to the other Necrofex because I didn't want him to provide that kind of leadership. When units feel like they're winning in combat, which these two certainly are, they will... It will increase their leadership and all of a sudden you've got two nearly unbreakable units that we can't quite deal with. I think the only reason we won there is because all of the summons had degenerated and it went purely to army losses. So when their leadership went, they started crumbling and they started dying. Um, very impressive, maybe six or so summons there right at the end from those two units. And we nearly lost it. Between my Marauder Chieftain running off the field, Orion surviving with 300 HP. Um, if he wasn't unbreakable, he would be gone as well. And Boris Toddbringer kind of hanging back making sure not to die. Victory. Yeah, drinking victory, you got it. And 
My Famir Berfi, like I said in the beginning, probably the MVP of this battle. Able to snipe out multiple lords, do a ton of damage with its spell casting, and then in the end there provide that that armor sundering, that armor sundering that was necessary to to damage that Necrofex Colossus. So let's go ahead and look at the army breakdowns. So decent kills here on the Morgul's, but they were ultimately destroyed. So not much to say about this army. It was a good it was a good army actually in theory. Like I said in the beginning, if, if any other of our allies, including myself, had been placed directly across from these, uh, my marauders would have been decimated. And I would have had a hard time finishing them off in the same way that the Wood Elf player was able to. Good kills all around. Orion with a big 70 there. No doubt from taking out lots of low tier zombie units. Noctilus. And the Necrofex Colossus did a lot of work for these guys. They, this isn't even counting the sheer number of summons that Count Noctilus was able to bring to the field. If you were able to count all those kills in addition, same with someone like uh, Salastra Direfin, the kills from the Damn Knights, as well as two units of Rotting Prometheans, was, would probably put her well into the 150 kill category. So she was almost certainly worth it. And the Tomb King player, Grant Hierophant Katep, did some serious damage as well. And I was pretty happy to see that they didn't go with the exact same builds that they did in the previous game. They did almost what I mentioned at the end of the last game that I cast with these guys. The Tomb King's player decided to be the one who got the solid front line with a little bit of ranged. And really allowed for the Count Noctilus player to take advantage of their ranged ability. While, you know, the other Vampire Coast army tried something that could have worked really well, but ultimately did not. And the Empire player just going wide and using the Hellblaster Volley Gun to snipe out Queen Bess early on was almost certainly crucial. An 18 kill Queen Bess, this was 1600 gold investment. Um, the Hellblaster Volley Gun did a great job of that. And smart use of cavalry as well, I will say. Keeping the grenade launchers live until the very end to deal with a lot of that chaff was certainly a key to victory there. So all right guys, I hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Tall Gaming. If you like the video, please do hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And please look forward to more content because I do have another game that I'm looking to cast. And I think it's going to be a good one. And I hope to see you there. So without any further ado guys, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one.